Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury from the Archie Luxury channel, the Paul Pluter channel, and Archie Luxury corporate. Guys, keep watching, keep watching. I need the viewers. I need the viewers, I need the subs, I need it. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends, whether you like them or hate them. Just tell them anyhow. Archie Luxury on YouTube. Hey guys, it's Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Today, guys, I'm doing paid review 20 SE9. 20 SE9. And this is for a French dude. So, uh, before we do this, customary wristwatch check. Paddock Philly 5196. 5196 Calatrava manual wind. It's yellow gold. I absolutely love it. Aaron Bespoke Strap. Okay, jump straight in. Hello, Archie. First of all, I'd like to thank you for all your work. This is a pleasure to see you almost, almost every, uh, almost every day on YouTube, on your YouTube channel. Uh, you are part of my daily routine. Love that routine all these years. You have been able to keep great quality in your content, share your expertise and your opinion on almost every matter. I've also applied some of your life advice on my relationships and at work. I'm sure it saved me some painful memories during the last 10 years. Thank you again. No worries. Thank you. Um, he goes on to say there, he goes on to say, just hang on there. Uh, got it. Carpet beetles, they, they develop into moths. Just trying to get rid of them to stop them breeding. Okay. Um, okay, because I'm almost, it's all, it is almost an achievement for me to request a review from you. Please do not use my name during the video okay no worries i'm french 31 years old i started collecting watches at 20 with some hamilton and oris but after progressively discovering what the most established brands could produce i realized that i needed to upgrade my collection with serious pieces i've attached pictures of my current collection with four watches here we go the first one a might Meister Singer uh, Circulus 43mm with an in-house movement. Clearly the less interesting watch here, but I decided to keep it for now, mainly due to the way it forces me to read time on it. Indeed, during the week, having one single hand on the dial gives me the feeling that time goes a bit slower than usual. I bought the watch used at €1,300 Euro from an AD. Uh, love also the manual wind it really creates a special connection with the watch and since then I'm used to uh, winding all my watches every day even the automatic ones a ritual I have I have every morning before deciding what watch I will pick up for the day Second, a Breitling Navi timer 43 mil with the in-house B01 movement it was my first serious watch I wanted to get a real horological watch with a great history. I was able to get it used at 3,600 euro from an AD. Uh, a model still with the glorious Golden Eagle as the Breitling logo instead of the new ones with only the B. It felt way more balanced with the Golden Eagle, I think, especially with the three subdials. He goes on third, the only watch. Uh, bought new in the current collection is the new Amiga Seamaster 42mm coaxial movement. I got first an Amiga Speedmaster Moonwatch, but rapidly sold it for the Seamaster. This watch looks more modern to me. Despite the great history of the Speedmaster and the manual wind, I love the watch. After a few weeks, I realized that this watch was not for me. Seamaster bought new at 3,600 euros. Finally, my last watch, my last watch is the Tudor Palagos 42mm Tudor in-house movement in titanium. Two years ago, I thought divers were not for me, and now, and I am now a big fan. 
Reason why I wanted to extend my collection with a second diver. This is my first watch ever on a bracelet and not a strap. I am pretty lucky to start with the Palagos as the adjustment on the clasp is simply amazing. And the watch is so light despite the look. Bought it used at 3300 euro. Uh, I think about extending my collection with two more watches. My rules always pick a new brand and a watch with a new functionality or special design. Single hand, chronograph, diver, bracelet in titanium, etc. This is essentially for me to avoid being bored by a watch and I prefer one upon a very similar, uh, upon similar other watch. I have two brands in mind, IWC and Rolex. For IWC, mainly the Portuguese. The chronograph version or even the power reserve Portuguese in 42mm. In either case, I will select this watch with a beautiful dark blue dial and a leather strap. In the case, uh, for differentiating a watch from others, I will have the dial color and maybe even a new complication with the power reserve. For Rolex, I thought the Explorer 1 in 39mm, but it might be too small. No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, what will you advise, Arch? Do you think I need to sell some current watches in the collection? What do you think about the IWC model selection? Okay, he's got a few questions here. Okay, so let, let's, let's, um, do you think, he goes on, do you think I can have a serious collection without a Rolex? Which Rolex will be best? Blah, 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 blah. Thank you. I've sent you 50 euro on PayPal for a paid review. Take care with this crazy COVID and keep making us great videos. Regards, this is the 31-year-old Frenchman. Okay, let's go quickly through his collection. So, firstly, the Meister Singer. The Meister Singer. Um, I gotta tell you, I, I really hated this brand. I hated this brand because the Germans, I just find it hard with the Germans, you know, the Germans. Uh, but, I think for a young man, Young man, anyone under 35. I think it's actually quite a novel sort of watch. It does have a design aesthetic, which I kind of, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think it's okay in your collection. So the Meister Singer, normally I'd say garbage, garbage, garbage. I kind of give it, yeah, I, I. I think it kind of works in your collection because you're a young guy. If you're young, you can get away with it. If you're an old, older, no. But if you're a young guy, under 35, I, I, I think it's okay. Then we got, let's move on to the next one, the Breitling, the Navi Timer. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You cannot fault that. It's horological excellence it's a design icon i don't care um which brightling you've got it's got to be a navi timer or a super ocean heritage that's what it needs to be and you've got one of the best i like it it's classic it's just gorgeous very gorgeous uh it's it's that's probably the best watch in the collection i think absolutely love it i do love it so well done. Well done on the Breitling. It's a great watch. Then we've got the Seamaster. Now, I, I don't approve. I was going to say, man, get a Speedy, get a Speedy. But I can understand it's not young and hip enough for you. Uh, by the way, if you manually wind your watches, it's not a great idea. You know, with things like Padex, manual wind, well, you've got no other choice. But on the automatic, any automatic you can wind it sort of 10 times, 10 winds to get it started, but you shouldn't wind it every day. That actually puts a lot of pressure on the gears. Now, the ones you've got are pretty robust, but on Horderology, they say don't do that. Okay, so I'm just telling you um, I wouldn't be doing that on the automatic watches. I've got to tell you, man, the Seamaster, I quite like it. I wouldn't have swapped my Speedy, but you're a young dude. Young guys. I go looking at this picture, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to have. So I, I get it. I get it. 
And then finally, we've got the Tudor Pelagos, 42 mil. That's a good size. Titanium, it's amazing metal titanium. I hate it. I hate titanium, but I'm old. See, I'm 48 in October. So I kind of, you know, it just doesn't gel for me. But for you, I, I get it. I get this collection. You're a young dude. Okay, so i got to be saying to you, the rules, I, I wouldn't be so picky. I, I think sometimes rules are meant to be broken. I really do believe that. So I, I, I wouldn't be so, um, you know, I wouldn't be so serious about this sort of stuff. Uh, I would say just, you know, when you're buying watches, you've got to buy what you like. You've got to be careful with this. You're buying a lot of new stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be, be, be a little bit careful because there is a lot of dog and rubbish out there. There's a lot of garbage. See, if you're buying second hand, it's okay because you can get out of this garbage. But if you're buying it new, let me tell you this, man. Let me give you the drum. You've got to be a bit careful, okay? That's, that's the only, only thing I, I would say there. Um... The, uh, I gotta tell you that the Pelagos, I like it. Okay, so now let's just go through. You want to get an IWC? I reckon the next thing you should get is a Rolex. Every man's gotta have a Rolex. You gotta have a Rolex unless you got a paddock. That's the only exemption I will give you. If you got a paddock, you don't need the Rolex. But I think in your case there, you really do need. The Rolex. You need a Rolex, man. Every man needs Rolex. They do. They do. They do. It's just, you just need it, okay? I'm sorry, okay? You need to get Rolex. That's what you need to. Every man needs Rolex. So what would I get with your collection there? I quite like it. Uh, what would I get? What Rolex would I get? Look, so let's just, uh, let's come to that in a minute. So what will be your advice? What do you think first I need to sell some of your current collection? I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I wouldn't I'm not a big fan of selling stuff. I think a young guy like you, you gotta add. Add to it. Don't sell, you gotta add stuff. Don't if you were buy selling stuff to get the next piece, that's with the with the sort of watches you've got there, you gotta be careful, man, because you can very easily go bad. It can go really bad for you, okay? It can go wrong. So I I wouldn't sell any of that. I like it. I like it. Okay, I like it. Even the the Meister singer. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it all. I would add Rolex. What Rolex would I add? I tell you honestly. You know what I reckon I would add if I were you? I reckon the Milgauss. The Milgauss. You mentioned the size on the 39. 39 is massive. So the Milgauss is 40. It's also anti-magnetic. That's its, that's its thingy. So I reckon any of the Milgausses. I'd probably go for the non-GV. Because that's a little bit cheaper. If you're going to go for a GV one. I'd go the blue. I think the blue is just stunning. It's 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 different. Uh, would I add an IWC? IWC makes some great stuff, but you got to buy it on the pre-owned market. Don't buy it new. IWC really tanks. But uh, I would say IWC. Look, there's some. Gr I had the Ingenua with the in-house movement. That was. I love that watch. Uh, I'd reckon the Portuguese. The Portuguese, uh, yeah, the chronograph. That's got the most beautiful numerals, just the font and that there. I, I I would say there's quite a few IWCs that, that pop. Nothing wrong with an IWC. Um, can I have a serious collection about a Rolex? No, you must have a Rolex. You've got to have a Rolex. Every man needs a Rolex. Which Rolex was best, for, as I said, the Milgauss? Um, I gotta tell you, man, I actually, you're 31 years old, you've actually got a really nice collection, okay? This is not a collection for a, an older guy, because I, I, for an older guy, the, the, the Meister singer's got no place, and you'd have a Speedy, but 
you've already explained it to me. Um, this is a young man's collection. It really is cool. I'd add the Rolex. Add the Rolex. Don't sell any of them. Okay, that's what I would. My best advice to you: don't sell any of them. Save up and buy. Don't be nickel and save swapping and trade because it's never going to work out well. Believe you me, that is not how you get a nice collection. I would add to it. Those are those four pieces. They actually fit together beautifully. It's a really nice collection. And I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I was reading this collection and I was thinking, ah, we've got a smart-ass Frenchman. We've got, uh, he's got a Meister Singer. I hate that. That's garbage. Uh, the Breitling. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I don't know. I was going to say the Amiga. Yuck. I was going to say the Tudor. hate the Pelagos. But when I look at it as a young guy... It's amazing. It really is a beautiful, cool, young guy's collection. So I would say, congratulations. I actually like it. I get the vibe. As I make these vids, I get the vibe. So, uh, yeah, it works. It's a great collection. So I would say add Rolex, then add an IWC. I like the one brand per watch. It actually it makes a lot of sense. Um... Except you need to have more Rolex. More Ro Rolex is always good. So, yep, there you go. That's my advice. Guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends. That's my, my review for this guy. I love his collection. Please, guys, put some negative comments. Uh, and remember, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need these paid reviews to keep me on the YouTube. Without, without this type of attention, I would sink fast. Guys... Without this, without paid reviews, I would sink 50 US dollars for a paid review. I'll tell you what I think. I'll give you my thoughts. And I will see you in the next one. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury. Who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.